Jesus is the gospel. He's the good news. Jesus is that which is to be preached. Jesus is that which, which is to be preached. I don't preach me and my gifts and my talent and my skills. I don't preach my ideas. I don't preach my values. I preach God values. I don't preach what, uh, what people think that, well, we don't want to hear that preaching. I don't preach based on what you want to hear. I preach on what God, based on what God directs me to preach. Jesus is the gospel. He's the good news. To truly understand how Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection are good news, we must understand the bad news that confronts us all. Certainly, Jesus is our Savior. But that means we must be saved from something. If there was no need to be saved, there would be no need for a Savior. If I don't have any issue with my plumbing, I don't have to call a plumber. No need to have come. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, well, it's, 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 it's $69 for a visit, whether we fix anything or not. And I bring them by the house. Well, what's wrong? Oh, I just want to talk with you. What? We, we, wouldn't, waste, we wouldn't waste that guy's time by doing that. And we wouldn't waste our money by doing that. The reason we have a savior is because we have a need to be saved. That's why we have a savior. The good news is we, need, we have a need to be saved and God sent a savior. When a firefighter rescues someone trapped in a burning building, the firefighter saves the person from being burned alive. In like manner, Jesus saved us from the penalty of sin. Sin is contrary to God's law. If anybody don't know what sin is, it's violating God's divine law, his divine order. And sin is contrary. Sin will focus on us appealing to our flesh and appealing to our own selfish ways. We will not focus on us yielding to God. It's contrary to God's law. And since God is just, his standard is perfect. God's not, God's not really trying to uh, show us how perfect he is. God is just showing us, I'm God, you must believe that I'm perfect. Because we can never understand the perfection of God in this finite body. We get the Holy Ghost and we understand aspects of it. The Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians, says, For we know in part, but when he which is come, then we shall know in full. We know in part, we prophesy in part. The Greek word for sin is hamartia. It implies an archer missing the mark. A person that has bow and arrow and they pull back and they release the arrow. And the arrow it, it don't even hit the target. <laughs> it flies off to the air somewhere. Let alone, let's say you're shooting at a bullseye, it don't even hit, it don't even hit the thing where the bullseye, it goes off. <laughs> if the archer misses the target completely, or if he misses it by just a few inches, the archer misses the mark. Salvation is not horseshoes. Getting close, getting, getting close to the pole or to the pen don't matter. Amen. See, it matters in the horseshoes because you take the horseshoe and you measure the distance between where the shoe land and where the pole is. That's not salvation. Salvation. 
Salvation is throwing a ringer where the pole is. We have all missed the mark. Therefore, each of us bears the guilt of sin. We've all, we've all were born into the world and our arrows were shot out by our parents and it didn't hit nothing on the target. And whether you, whether you miss it a lot or Because some folks say, well, I was born in church. Okay, but you weren't born in the Holy Ghost. You ain't John the Baptist. Come on. You, come on now. You, you, weren't, you, ain't, you weren't conceived like Jesus was by the Holy Spirit. So you, you, whether you miss it by a few inches because you were born and your parents were in the church or you miss it by a great deal, you miss the mark. You still need to repent. Still need to come up to the altar. Still need to get saved. Still need to know that God loves you enough to send someone to tell you or share with you that you need to know him in the fullness of your pardon. Don't, 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 don't play them kind of semantics with me. Well, I, I was this... I, I'm a, I'm a deacon son. Okay. <laughs> I mean, what do you want, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to follow that? <laughs> deacon son. I was raised this and that, and my granddad and my grandma was this and that. And oh, they sung in the choir. Okay. <laughs> what, what do you want me to say to that? Do, do I have to go to Acts 19? Have you received since you believed? Do I have to go back to that? Each of us bears the guilt of sin. And there's only one thing that can wash away our sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We sing that song. I haven't seen that song about 40 some years. Amen. Sin fracture human creation. Romans chapter 8 verse 18 to 23 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be re revealed in us. And this is, the writer is trying to contrast what we experience while we live in here to what we're going to experience when we get under God's glory. He said, for the earnest expectation of the creature, which is us, we wait for the manifestation of the sons of God. We wait until we become the bride of Christ. Right now, we're the body of Christ. But when he comes back to receive us, we're going to become the bride of Christ. He's going to marry us. We're going to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And let me say this. Not only were we invited, we are the main attraction. Amen. Amen. If you look at marriage, and we're talking about the marriage supper, which is part of the wedding feast, the wedding is about the bride for the most part. Now the marriage is about the couple. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I don't have statistics. I'm saying it right now. But I would be willing to say that about 75% of men who marry don't really care that much about the wedding. That's three-fourths of men. They don't really care much about the wedding. No. They don't care about the wedding. The men care about the marriage. Man. I, I, I don't have a statistic. I'm just saying, I just believe that most men don't care about the wedding. It's not a big deal. They, they won't because they, they feel that they love that woman and that uh, they want her to have her day. They allow certain things to happen and 
Some, some folks spend outrageous money on it, so forth and so on. That's their business. But most men don't care about no wedding. A lot of men would do it at the courthouse if it wasn't for the bride wanting to have her spot. Look what it says here, Romans 8.20 says, For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope. It says here, Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Delivered, we're delivered, we're delivered if we come under God's spirit and his covering. We're not delivered of our own volition. Amen. We're not Amen. mentally delivered. I can't mentally process me being delivered. Because my flesh is my flesh. Amen. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And he's used this in comparison to maybe a woman as she's in labor. And she knows she's going to bring forth a child. And the child is come out, coming out healthy. But for this momentary time frame, she's in pain. And she's groaning and moaning. But she's getting ready to birth something. And it says here in Romans 8.23 says, And not only they, but ourselves also. We which have been the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. We know at some point in our walk with God, we're going to be changed. The scripture says, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. Mm -hmm. And it says, And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet oh, the Lord ever in the air. Right. Oh, 